ministry out. Something. Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim clip of the week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamer tag is I Ryan I. That's I R Y E N I, and you can message it to me over Xbox, and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now, moving on to the video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome to week number 78 of the top 5 Skyrim mods of the week. Now, hopefully you guys will enjoy the mods that I've picked off for this week. Starting off at our number 5 spot, we have Lydia Reborn Character Overhaul. Now, this mod changes the way that Lydia looks, walks, and lives. She no longer walks like a brute, she no longer sits at home and eats sweet rolls all day, and during the day she will guard Whiterun and can be found either wandering around outside or at the top of the guard barracks at the entrance of Whiterun. And at night she will go into the inn for a drink and to eat. She'll now sleep in her own bed. By default, she actually could not, because Bethesda played a dirty joke on Lydia and turned her bed the wrong way so that she couldn't lay down. But that is fixed in this mod, so she'll be able to sleep in her own bed. Now, I think this mod is very awesome because once you complete like a couple quests and you actually get Lydia in Whiterun, Lydia literally just sits in your Breeze home all day and really does nothing. And just the fact that she stays home after being, you know, close with the Jarl, you would think that the Jarl would still need her if the Dragonborn isn't going to be using her so instead of the house carl just staying at home and doing nothing all day she actually guards white run and she actually plays a part in the community of the white run city i think it just makes the game a whole lot more realistic to know that she's actually going around and actually guarding and she has the guard outfit on as well rather than just sitting at home and doing nothing all day and sleeping in the dragonborn's bed because she really couldn't sleep in her own before so that's why it comes in at our number five spot so i'd recommend downloading lydia reborn character overhaul Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have the Nightingale Forever mod. Now this mod adds a couple of craftable items underneath the miscellaneous category in the smithing station. It adds some Nightingale arrows, the Nightingale blade, a Nightingale bow, a dagger, and a shield that all have a very unique skin to them. I'm always looking for new unique weapons to put into the game and new unique skins for other weapons that are also put into the game. But don't get me wrong, I really like the vanilla skins of certain weapons and also the textures of the weapons themselves in the vanilla game, but I like to see unique things made by the community. And I I like to see weapons that are put into the game and these nightingale weapons look amazing as you can see let me show you them right now we have the shield i really like the shield i think it's one of the best looking shields in the game and if we take a look at the sword and the dagger and the bow as well they all have very unique textures on them and they're very cool looking weapons and that's definitely why it comes in at our number four spot so a very quick mod to review but the nightingale forever mod is definitely one worth downloading so go and give it a shot Coming in at our number 3 spot, we have a follower mod called Jinxed Followers, Blessed Dawn Twins. Now this mod adds two new followers into the game that are twins. There's Aria, which is a raven-haired beauty, had an affinity for fire and tempered a match. She was warm, passionate, and alluring, but those blessed with fire were walking the fine edge of a double-sided blade. For all her warmth and passion, she was a woman filled with heat and wrath and anger, and those around her feared her for her fury nature. Then we have an ace. She has silver hair like moonlight and had an affinity for ice. She's pure, playful, and kind, and most of all, beautiful. Despite her caring nature, however, deep down her heart was cold, forever reminded of the deaths of those she loved and cherished the most. She fought and led with an unwavering hand and an unforgiving heart. Together with their years of training and powerful magic at their disposal, the girls realize that their time with their vigilance of Stendar have come to an end. With the world open to them now, they look towards the future their greatest dream to see the end of Lord Harkon. They now take upon them the mantle of Blessed Dawn, to forever remind themselves of how their story must end. Will you help them in their journey to defeat Lord Harkon, or corrupt them for your own purposes? The choice is yours. Now this mod will be best used with the multiple followers mod as well, so you can have both twins at your side at all times. So you can have one that uses the fire spells and then the other that uses the ice spells as well. And combine them together, they're going to be a very overpowered combo. And the three of you are just going to wreak havoc across the land of Skyrim. And that's definitely why it comes in at our number three spot. So I strongly recommend downloading this mod. 
Coming in at our number two spot, we have Andromeda, Unique Standing Stones of Skyrim. Andromeda replaces the mundane vanilla standing stone effects with two new abilities per stone, enabling many new character builds. Upon discovering all of these standing stones, each of them also grants a unique power. Do you fancy new build concepts? The Lord Stone improves your power attacks but prevents stamina regeneration in combat. To make up for this, you can power attack when out of stamina for reduced damage. Heavy is the crown. Do you prefer to play the role of a negotiator? The Ritual Stone stores the memories of the recently dead and summons them into the next battle against their former buddies as vengeful ghosts with a score to settle. Being an illusion effect, this combos well with summoning spells for twice the cold bodies. Or do you wish to master the arcane arts, as many spell vendors say? The Apprentice Stone makes you feel stronger, or sometimes weaker. Magic is hard, and for when you get in over your head, the unlockable power retaliates against an incoming killing blow by destroying the attacker before he has a chance to. Or are you a simple man with a simple desire to make lots of money by murdering lots of people? The Thief Stone's unlockable power temporarily increases all loot from kills, especially violent kills. Get to stabbing. And there's many more traits that go along with all of the other standing stones. That was just the Lord Stone, the Ritual Stone, the Apprentice Stone, and the Thief Stone. And there's multiple other stones in the game that are completely overhauled and add a whole bunch of new abilities into the game. So why wouldn't you want this mod? You know, the standing stones in the vanilla version are kind of boring, and I never really go to the other ones other than the one by Riverwood, which is the Guardian Stones. That's pretty much the only one I ever travel to whenever I'm playing a legit playthrough. And this mod actually just changes the game around so that the other stones actually have a lot more uses and a lot more abilities to be earned. And like I said, upon discovering all of the standing stones, each of them also grants a unique power that you can use for your character and your playthrough as well. So that's why it comes in at our number two spot so I strongly recommend downloading Andromeda Unique Standing Stones of Skyrim. Coming in at our number one spot, we have Necrosis V2. Now to get here, you have to go to Riften and travel northwest towards the lake. The portal lies at the base of the mountain near Redwater Den, like I'm showing you right now. Now other than adding an entirely new realm to Skyrim through a portal, there's also a house mod included with this as well. The house is named Gulgotha, and it comes with a fully stocked kitchen, all of the unique workbenches, lots of unique static display items, plenty of containers to store loot, scrolls, notes, journals, linked gem storage, linked ore storage, linked dragon pre storage, dragon claw storage, gold storage, mead storage, storage for wine, soul gems, food, potions, paragons, alchemic recipes, hearthstones, alchemy ingredients, bug jars, amulets, weapons, staff, unique armor, regular armor, clothes storage, and much much more. There's so much to be stored in this house and it's very big and it's very beautiful as well. There's even a big enough library to hold all 470 books in the game. There's also 10 display mannequins and 10 weapon and shield plaques in the library and many more inside the personal vault. There's also a mining included in this mod that has all of the ore deposits found around Skyrim for easy access, all gem deposits, and a chamber for spider crafting and a cart near the entrance that is linked to a chest in the crafting area. There's also a shrine camp which has all standing stones and shrines in one area. And there's also a merchant. His name is Zom and he has tons of coin on him. He's a general merchant for the most part but does have rare items as well. He sells all spell books, every type of soul gem, and every type of ore. Now, as with every house mod that I cover in these top 5 mod episodes, I'm going to be giving you guys the full tour of the entire house, so let's begin. Oh, 
So as you can see, it looks like a lot of time and effort was put into building this little realm outside of Skyrim while going through the portal. And it's very beautiful. And I've never seen an area like this before. It has a lot of like purple coloring and a lot of darker colors. And I really like the way that it was put together and the way that it was detailed. So that's definitely why it comes in at our number one spot. So I strongly recommend downloading Necrosis V2. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the top five Skyrim mods of the week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods that you'd like me to cover in future top five mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description. And you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions through there as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. And I'll talk to you guys later.